Are you mystified by delta hedging? Are you confused about whether to buy or sell options when the share price changes? If so, this video is for you. Say you own a hundred thousand shares and want to hedge your position. You can hedge using call options. Remember when the share price goes up, the value of call options also goes up. Therefore to hedge your position, you need to go short on call options. The next question is how many call options do you need to go short on? And the answer is the number of short call options is equal to the number of shares 100,000 in this case divided by the delta. Now the delta might be given to you. This is approximately equal to ND1 which comes out of the Black-Scholes-Merton model but there is another way of looking at this. If you look at the call option price on the y-axis and the underlying stock price on the x-axis then the value of a call option looks something like this. Let's say that our strike price is over here. The slope at any point represents the delta. It's the sensitivity of the call option price to the stock price. Now let's say that you hedge your position in these shares using call options when the stock price was a little below strike. So say the strike is 50 and you hedge when the option and you hedge when the stock was worth 47. So at a stock price of 47 there is a given delta and you calculate the number of options. What if the stock price increases? When that happens notice the delta increases. Since the delta is going up that's in the denominator what happens to the number of options? that will go down which means that you need fewer number of short calls. Your position can also be hedged using put options. If the stock price goes up the value of the put goes down and vice versa and therefore to hedge a long position in shares you need long puts. The number of put options again is the number of shares divided by delta but the delta for a put is different. If you are given the ND1 number then delta is approximately equal to ND1 minus 1. But it's also important to understand the graphical picture. So if here is your stock price, here is the put value then the value of a put goes something like that. Let's say that this is the strike price and you buy put options when the stock price is over here. So again let's say the strike is 50 and you buy put options when the stock price is 55. So what happens to the number of put options if the stock price comes down? Notice if the stock price comes down this slope is more sensitive. The delta for a put is always going to be negative but as the stock price comes down the delta becomes more negative. If you look at the number of options as the delta becomes more negative, the absolute value is going up, the number of options needed goes down. So if initially to hedge a hundred thousand shares you had bought sixty thousand put options if the stock price goes closer to strike and the absolute value of the delta is increasing then the number of put options that you need comes down. So you will need to sell some put options. If you keep these pictures in mind then it will be easy to solve any questions you get related to dynamic delta hedging. And I hope you see where the term dynamic is coming from. Once you create a hedge, you can't just sit on that hedge. You need to dynamically adjust the hedge based on the stock price changing and hence the delta changing. So that is it. If you found this lecture helpful, 
then I'll be very grateful if you can do three things for me. Number one, like this video. Number two, like my Facebook page. And number three, visit analystforum.com and there add my logo to your studying with profile. You can see this slide for help on how to do that. Thank you very much and good luck with your studies.